um, the Jim Peters Trophy being awarded by a, uh, a club runner who had, who had travelled on the train to, uh, to the start. The stories keep coming out um, and uh, it really was an amazing performance from everybody and so delighted. Um, you know, Dave, Dave, David's story itself is a, is a fairy tale and uh, a great, great new champion to him on the Army Women's World Record is where do you start? It's amazing. <coughs> Where do you start on yesterday? How do you top that next year? Uh, we have already started having conversations about how that might happen. Uh, we're not here to talk about next year. Um, we're here to celebrate um, what was truly a, a, a stunning day. Um, so, uh, yeah, I couldn't be more proud of, uh, of what the team did um, and what the runners uh, alongside me did in terms of their performance, their preparation. Um, just, yeah, really, really proud. The partnership with um, Abbott um, for this series of six races, well, seven races, if you take the fact that this is the start this weekend of Series 11 and London next year will be the end of Series 11. I like the way that sort of book ends it and then obviously enables the moving on of the opening race in the following cycle. Abbott have been incredibly important because of the finance they've put in, but the initiative like um, this year, each winner, each champion was uh, given $10,000 to choose to donate to a charity of their choice here in London. So $40,000. That's going to be the case at each World Marathon Major in the series. Seven. That's $280,000 from Abbott going towards charities of various choices from the different athletes. And I understand each race can decide the way, the method of that money being distributed yes. with the, to the charities. That's just one minor aspect of Abbott's involvement. It, it, it is, and I don't want to pick out one charity that I'm now, now, now going to. Um, uh, so, um, uh, I mean, obviously there's the We're Archer Academy, um, so uh, um, has done an enormous amount in improving, in improving wheelchair racing through, throughout um, this. But Daniel's charity that he, he chose, I had never heard of um, until uh, today and um, that's, that's the Gathimba Edwards Foundation. Yeah, absolutely, and and it is about uh, young uh, Kenyan children who do not have um, uh, very much and how to really in, um, sort of inspire their life story. And uh, it comes from a meeting of two runners. It comes from a meeting of a. Uh, at a mile race at a British runner that went to Kenya and a Kenyan runner that was running in Britain. And it's stories like that that, that actually when you go into it, that's, that's what the London Marathon is all about. It's about you know, charity, it's about giving, it's about togetherness. Um, and you know, there was a backdrop yesterday of some of the biggest security fears that we as an event have had to deal with. Um, but, but what everyone can see is the togetherness that comes from marathon running and the people that do it. It is such a unique sport in doing that. The everyday people lining up on the start line against the gods of the sport. Um, they all understand how hard and difficult 26.2 miles is and they are there to help each other um, in spirit, in actions um, and, and yesterday Absolutely, you showed it. I mean, Manuel Oshar's foundation, for the record, is Right to Play. That's her choice, rather, her charity. And Mary, you've chosen, the, um, uh, Daniel, you've chosen to Save the Children, Mary, the Kathimba. It was very sorry. Yeah. Um, but the charity element is what makes London unique, amongst one or two other things. But it's probably, for the 40,000 watching, for much of the TV coverage, the main thing that makes it stand out. Yeah, I mean, uh, this year, obviously, our official charity of the year was Heads Together. And the campaign of the Duke and Duchess of Cambridge and Prince Harry and having them there on the day at the start. Um, you know, people didn't know that they were going to be at a Buxton Water Station at mile 22. There was a cheering point going on at mile 6. Um, they were there giving medals at the finish line. All of this is going on um, in, the, in, in the background and actually, probably at the start, no, very few people had an understanding of the huge logistical operation that was going on to make that, make that happen. On top of the fact that 40,000 runners happened to be going past 650,000 bottles of water being given out, a quarter of a million bottles of Lucas A. It, it truly is a, um, an amazing event um, that, as I say, just gets people together. And um, 
I am certain we will have beaten the world record for charity one day in fundraising. I mean, the world record was 59.4 million. I am certain we will go over 60 million pounds raised for charity uh, yesterday, which will take us to over 800, 890 million pounds since my father and John Disley um, founded this event in, in 1981. And, I mean, 890 million pounds for charity, that is just an unbelievable figure. David, the $10,000 that is, you've chosen to have go to the Weir Archer Academy seems like small beer in comparison, but actually that sort of funding for small organisations is absolutely critical. And you must be really proud that you can carry on and continue assisting this legacy of your foundation. Yeah, definitely. Um, you know, um, I had the idea back in 2008. I was at Beijing and I was in the you know, at the warm-up track, getting ready for, for my racing, and um, I sat there and saw the, the, the GB wheelchair racing squad, and there was um, seven of us. And then I saw lots of teams coming in, you know, some of the teams that don't get any money, you know, like Thailand and, and, and small countries, and they have like 10, 12 wheelchair racers. So I sat there and, and, and thought, well, there's something going wrong here. You know, there's a lot of money in the school, back at home. There's just not enough at the grassroots level. Um, we're all worried about gold medals, but when's the gold medals going to come in in the next four, five, ten years? So I sat and thought about it while I was uh, preparing for my race to nurse, and I felt after Beijing I, I needed to um, set up something and do something for the, for the sport because I felt like it was dying in Great Britain. Um, so I, I got back with Jenny and, and said that we need to you know, help the next generation come through because it's it's worrying. I was worried for you know for for wheelchair racing. I thought it was going to die. Um, and then obviously 2012 took over my life for a, for a long time. And um, we had a few young athletes come through like Will Smith and Shay Chay done his first marathon yesterday. Um, and he's a sprinter, so he, he enjoyed the moment yesterday. But um, after 2012, that just opened the eyes to, to wheelchair racing and, you know. I mean, the London Marathon's been a huge supporter yeah. for many years of the wheelchair racing. There's the mini London Marathon wheelchair race, of course. <clears throat> You've been uh, supporting the London Marathon by your participation, giving it profile for many years yourself, you know, seven titles now. Um, what can you do with this sort of money, ten thousand dollars for the Weir Archer Foundation? Get is that is that does that goes directly to buying shares for kids? Or? Yeah, it can. You know, we can get equipment. Um, we can help out get chairs. Uh, <coughs> funding for races. You know, some some of the kids' parents can't afford to get to races, so we can pay their entry fees and give them some petrol money, pay for their hotels, and help them help the families go go with them as well, and, and just have support. Yeah, so it's a massive help for. You know, chairs are not, you know, they're very expensive. You're looking at, you know, for a decent chair, you're looking nearly four grand now. So it's, um, you know, because they're all custom built, you can't put a small kid in a, in a big chair because it, it just wouldn't race well. So, uh, yeah, it's, uh, it will go far. And, and lucky. And I know we had a chat yesterday about it, but <laughs> you've had a, a night to sleep on it. Your own future, you know, you're a, a man who's got an MBE, a, a CBE. You won four golds at the Paralympics in London. You've got six Paralympic golds in total, um, seven London titles. Uh, are we looking at a, a, a sort of bit of a resurgence of, of David Weir in the race <laughs> now, I, albeit without the track racing? Um, Paris uh, champion, London champion in the last couple of yeah, weeks. It's, it's been a good couple of weeks for me. And I've, um, I've felt back to my best. Uh, it's been a, a challenging six, seven months since Rio really, to pick myself up and I didn't do that yesterday it was uh, truly special to me and um, I know I didn't look too happy in the, in the interviews and stuff but deep down it was uh, it's definitely one of the proudest uh, moments of, of my career and, you know to top London 2012 it had to take a special race yesterday and, and, and do it. Um, so moving forward um, I've got a couple of races yet to do in May, so I've got the, the, the 10k uh, and um, the Westminster mile.
maybe I can go a little bit quicker. I'll try and make that my record again. Depends on the band, the conditions and stuff, but uh, I feel I'm in that sort of shape again. Um, and then we'll see after. To have a break from the track is, is you know, to retire from that I think was the best decision so I can concentrate maybe on, on the road. Um, let me save this moment for a couple of weeks and then I decide that now I've got maximum points for the World Major Marathons. Might be a good idea to maybe do the marathons at the end of the season and uh, win a little bit of cash. <laughs> Nothing wrong with